What's going on guys and welcome back to a brand new video and today we are going to be rebuilding Liverpool. A highly requested video and to do this we're going to be using the perfect 424 created by Nap. It's an absolute sensational tactic, it scores lots of goals and it also defends really well as well. If you do enjoy the rebuild you see on this channel be sure to leave a like on this one, subscribe to the channel as well and do turn on notifications and I must say quickly do go over to the Twitch that is in the description. A ton of you guys have been coming over that is absolutely loads of fun for you guys. We get to do the fantasy draft, we just get to chat about football in general stuff it's a great stream and the community we're building is absolutely incredible so do come over if you've got a moment and say hello but let's get into this video and hopefully make liverpool great again so as you can see we are now at liverpool we're going to have this little screen here it makes it look more professional and you know what it's nice to see we've been appointed one hundred and ninety thousand pounds i believe we're prepared to pay before so quite a generous contract from liverpool for a staff member and we're going to go into it now now this is going to be one of the slightly easier rebuilds in the sense that they have got a good team it's just at the moment they are struggling a little bit and i'm hoping we can be the sort of reason why they eventually come back and start winning some games again and hopefully we can do that um, we're going to set ourselves four to five seasons it depends how it goes if we get off to a bad start definitely five but do you know what the club's actually in a real real good place um you get a pretty generous budget in my opinion the training facilities are great the youth facilities are great um obviously some of the key players you're looking at jordan henderson milner salah carvalho as a hot prospect there are quite a few players which i am looking to move on i'm going to be honest and i'm pretty sure a lot of liverpool fans can probably sense who these are players that us you know possibly going to be coming to the end of a contract or something like that so there's a lot to go on but the main the main aim i'm going to be honest you can probably tell by the thumbnail we are doing everything we can to try and sign jude bellingham that is going to be the main aim and to do that we have only been given 42 million pounds but as you know in fm as in real life you can do installments and that is going to play a very key part of this because at the end of the day we're not going to be able to pay for him up front because he's going to cost over 100 million i'll tell you that so hopefully we can stretch and do that because to be fair this team is good as i mentioned obviously the goalkeeper is good the defense is pretty decent in my opinion obviously it depends on how well van dyke plays the midfield is an area which definitely needs improvement in my opinion two young midfielders need to come in um possibly all one young midfielder which would be bellingham and then a slightly more experienced one because we've got players in who aren't really doing it anymore you've got your oxlade chamberlains you've got your nabby caters um obviously arter i'm not really a big fan of and he's only on loan anyway going forward some really good options mo salah diaz nunez gakpo um several several different players who we are going to be looking to bring in and or well, not bring in who we have got sorry so we've got a lot of stuff to sort of work with now i'm hoping i'm hoping it does pay off because i've got sort of three to four signings in my head right now who i really want and if it works this is going to be a fantastic rebuild well it has happened we have actually managed to bring in a ridiculous amount of players we've also looked to sell some players as well we let nabi kater go to manchester city for 30 million pounds we let adrian go to real sociedad for 2.8 million pounds and also Firmino because he is getting older he wanted to leave and newcastle put in a bid i couldn't refuse 44 million is a ridiculous price for Firmino, a very good offer and one which i don't think we would have got if we were to hold onto him for a season or two this allowed us to spend a lot of money we spent obviously 120 million pounds on jude bellingham 89 million pounds on declan rice exactly what i wanted exactly what i said one young hot prospect in jude bellingham and one slightly more but still prospect a player in declan rice but with a little bit of an experience and obviously a little bit of a different game style and cody gakpo for some reason wasn't actually updated on this database so we went out and signed him because obviously we have to he is in the team for 77 million pounds and in my opinion these were some fantastic signings they really were and i'm i'm going to be surprised now if we don't come out and you know do some bits of them because at the end of the day we the team's now looking quite nuts jude bellingham is one of them players who can literally do a little bit of everything um he's still young he's only 19 he's got tons of pot um, potential sorry he's gonna try to combine potential and ability in one word there but they've got tons of potential pretty much all of these players to be fair declan rice we all know him obviously him and bellingham have played in that england midfield we've seen a lot about them and i think having them as a partnership together works really really well so i'm hoping they perform as well for the club as they do for country and declan rice again only 23 years of age so a few years older than bellingham him, but still has a lot of potential a ton to offer and you know what I'm, I'm really excited to actually see how these two partner and obviously Gakpo a player which Liverpool players are familiar with now a player that I feel a lot of people wrote off just because of a few bad games but you know what he's now scoring in real life and hopefully we get to see a little bit from Gakpo in this save and this is going to be the tactic we're going to be using again a shout out to Nap um a fantastic tactic creator in the scene does a lot for FM Scout and you know what this tactic 
it done really, really well, I'm going to be honest. And it, it looks nice for this Liverpool side as well. You obviously got Jota, Gakpo, Diaz, Salah, Rice, Thiago, Robertson, Van Dijk, Matip, Trent and Alisson. Um, Bellingham is on the bench because he is injured. Now, we are going to try and get the best out of Nunes because I want to get Nunes firing. He's, he's turning it on a little bit in real life now, which is good to see because no one wants to see a player flop, in my opinion, unless you're like a real toxic fan. Um, You know, no one wants to see a player really, really flop. But do you know what? I'm slightly confident. It's not ideal. There's several players on in this sort of team alone who I'd like to get rid of in the sense of um, Joe Gomez I'm not a big fan of, I'm going to be honest. Chamberlain, Milner, um, Arter I'm not going to be obviously be signing. Um, who else we got? That, that's pretty much it, to be fair. Um, but unfortunately, we couldn't sell some of these players because obviously, you know, not too many people are interested in sort of older players who aren't really in the best of form. So... The only player we've really got rid of that we wanted to this season was Naby Keita. But let's go into the first season and see exactly what we can do with this new look Liverpool side. And what we've done was sensational. I mean, we've won everything in the first season. I can't, I didn't expect to win everything, but I expected to win stuff because obviously this is a rebuild with a slightly different idea. The main focus of this rebuild is to more rebuild the squad. The squad on FM is capable of winning trophies, as it is in real life. But the main prospect of this video, the main sort of, you know, the reason why I made it is to just replace some of the players that are going to be leaving in the future, bring in younger players and sort of see what Liverpool look like when we do this. And do you know what? As you can see, Champions League winners, Premier League winners, FA Cup winners, Carabao Cup winners, Community Shield winners. It's five trophies in one season. It is genuinely nut stuff. 135 goals scored, only 29 conceded. If we go into the squad here, you can see our Mo Salah enjoying a fantastic season. 49 goals, 25 assists from him. Nunes with 49 goals, 13 assists. Gakpo with 25 goals and 20 assists. Canate, 23 goals and one assist. Jota, 22 goals and six assists. 14 and 14 out of Diaz. Um, Diaz, sorry. Bellingham having a reasonably quiet season, but, you know, he's not a striker, so we're not going to expect loads of goals. Um, Would have been nice to see possibly a few more assists, but a decent start on season. Matip also contributing with the goals. And, you know, 26 assists here, by the way. Um, we, we're not, and 16 here, actually. 16 for Trent, 26 for Robertson, 12 for Chimiskas, and this goes obviously out on loan. But a real, real good indicator in terms of the players that are getting involved. And that's something which this tactic does really well. The goal scorers, the goals are all spread, the assists are spread, and everyone puts in a great performance. And next season, we I mean, we have got a ridiculous budget right now. We have been given £117 million to spend in the next transfer window. And this is before we sell some of the players that we might be tempted to sell if we can offload them. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get into the next transfer window and hopefully strengthen even more. But if you are enjoying the video so far, it would mean a lot if you'd hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and do turn on notifications. It's completely free. It helps the channel grow. And also, you know, it just helps the videos get found. So be sure to do that. But let's go in and see who we can pick up. Well, it's been a very active transfer window again, as you can probably expect. Um, they seem to all be quite active. We also decided to sell Oxley Chamberlain to Norwich purely because of the offer they put in of £34 million. And um, you've also got Thiago going to Inter Milan for £44.5 million. And the reason why I've done this is because Thiago is a great player, but he is also aging a little bit. And I feel like we've got enough midfield players in there now. Obviously, Declan Rice and Bellingham cement the first spots. We've also got good backup in Henderson and Fabinho, to be fair. I could afford to let Thiago go. Um, at the end of the day, and that funded some ridiculous transfers. We've got Dalit coming from Bayern for 122 million. We've got Yuri and Timber coming from Ajax for 94 million, and also Musiala coming from Bayern for 122 million. So a lot of this was done in installments, but obviously we had a big budget and also we offloaded 133 million pounds worth. As you can see here, I forgot to mention this, the big one. Joe Gomez also goes to Real Madrid for 52 million pounds. Hence why we brought in Dolit, because obviously it is a little bit of an upgrade or big upgrade in my opinion. So overall, a fantastic sort of season going outwards and also players coming in. And this guy here is really going to be the make or break of that back line. Him and Van Dijk obviously could be a fantastic partnership in this Liverpool team. He's only 23 years of age and he's already looking so good. Ridiculous attributes all the way across the cards. Obviously, his value is absolutely nuts. He is on a fair bit of money to be here, I'm going to be honest. But that's what he wanted and he would not accept without it. So I'm hoping this transfer pays off. We then go across to Timber again. It's going to be another Dutch defender. This guy is so versatile. We always go with him. He can play centre-back, he can play DM, he can play right-back. It's good backup for Trent as well. Um, also, he can cover centre-back, as I said. He isn't going to really be used as a midfielder, but to be covering the centre-back and the right-back is a really, really good, a really good thing. 
And then Musiala is just one of them players which I haven't signed too much this year, and I'm a really big fan of him. He can play central, which again, he won't really be doing. He's definitely going to be used more on the left-hand side. He offers so much. He's not really, you know, um, he is kind of quick, actually, quicker than what I thought, but he's more of a sort of get the ball on the, you know, get get on the ball type of winger, cut inside, link up play, more than, you know, a run at, you know, run at a type of player, in my opinion. But he can do that by the looks of it. He's actually quite quick, a lot quicker than what I thought. Again, only 20 years of age. Tons of potential. Uh, again, quite on a bit of wage, but we have offloaded several players to afford to be able to do this. And it makes the team look so much better now. We've got Allison, Trent, Delit, Van Dyke, Robertson, Rice, and Bellingham, Salah, Musiala, Nunes, and Jota. The bench is also looking strong now. We've obviously got Timber, Diaz, Gakpo, Canate, Fabinho, Carvajal, Matip, and Henderson. And on this bench now, there are still a couple of players I will look to move on. Our Matip, dependent, obviously, ain't going to get too much game time as we do bring in stronger centre backs. We've got Canate and Timber that do obviously drop to the bench so it depends if Matic's going to play he's been a great player for Liverpool over the years but at the end of the day everything does come to an end and eventually that is going to happen in real life so let's just see what happens but let's get into the next season I'm excited to see what happens because obviously that midfield partnership's ridiculous and now the attack is also looking very 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 solid and it's almost a replica. In fact, it is pretty much a dead replica, except this time we've actually come out and we have won six trophies because the Community Shield, the Carabao Cup, the FA Cup, the Premier Division, the Super Cup and the Champions League. So six trophies, one season, domination in the Premier League, 129 goals scored, only 22 conceded, and the squad stats are absolutely outrageous here. We're going to have Mo Salah with 46 goals, 21 assists. Nunes with 43 goals, 14 assists. We're going to have, I thought that was Keller here there. I'm going to have Delit coming in with 23 goals as a centre-half. Absolutely nuts from that. Again, his set-piece routines are genuinely incredible. I'm um, Drew Bellingham, a little bit better this season. 12 goals, 18 assists. Diego Jota with 37 goals and 11 assists. 20 assists coming in from Trent. Musiala, a good season, 12 goals, 20 assists. 19 assists coming in in from Tomista, so I imagine Robertson must have been injured for a while. Um, we're going to have Cody Gakpo enjoying quite a good season, considering he didn't play a load of games. 18 goals and also 10 assists. 17 goals, 6 assists coming in from Luis Diaz. Um, what else have we got down here? 14 assists from Robertson, and we've also got Harvey Elliott enjoying... I mean, a lot of them games are a sub, so we can't be too harsh on him. 3 goals and 13 assists, and... Again, it's just very good to see everyone getting involved. It really is. And to go into the next season, they're not slowing down with the budget, guys. We've got £145 million to spend going into the next season. And again, this is before some of the plays that we possibly do look to sell. So... You've got to ask questions now. Are we looking to offload Henderson? Are we looking to offload Fabinho? Um, you know, there's possibility. There's rumours. You know, anything can happen in this. Because at the end of the day, if we've got the opportunity to offload them for a good price, we'd be nuts not to. Because we can obviously replace them with younger, better talent. And that's sort of the whole point of this rebuild. To replace the older players and sort of put this Liverpool squad in the best position going forwards. And that is what we're going to do. So let's hop over to the third transfer window and see what we can do. Before we do get into the third transfer window, though, guys, I do want to quickly say we are live streaming on Twitch now. So please do come over. Obviously, you can come over, be active in the chat. We've had a ton of you guys come over. I always put on the community tab when I am going to go live. So it'd be really nice to see some of you guys there. We do viewer fantasy drafts. We've got an Ipswich save going at the moment. And also, the Discord server is now available. It's completely free, obviously. And it's a great place to share tactics, talk to other fantastic FM players, and just join in, really. It's a great place. So be sure to do them two things and just come and vibe with the chat, you know. But now, let's get on to this transfer window. So again, we are going to see some departures. Nothing really too big though. Um, as you can see here, these are the real standout ones. So nothing massively. But what you can see is some players being brought in. And you know what? We brought in some stars. We turn to Tottenham first of all, to Zabrani. Now the reason why this has happened is because initially Timber was brought in as sort of a backup centre back. But he's actually been, you know, he's actually a lot more comfortable at right back. He sort of is rotation for Trent, such competitive for Trent. He might even start on some occasions. And then it's a bit of an unorthodox signing because I wanted a player that can play on the wing, but can also play up front. And there were several options I could do. Obviously, the one I tried to get to make this rebuild go from... I mean, we've already signed some ridiculous players, but to push this rebuild to the top of the game, I wanted to get Mbappe in. But obviously, that was not going to happen. Um, it was a ridiculous proposal they offered to me. So we turn to Ansu Fati with £138 million to bring him in. And he is a very good player, but we're not going to stop there because you can see here we also get a backup, backup, a better backup goalkeeper in Diogo Costa. Now, the good thing about this is 
He is that good that also when Allison does start to decline, he can instantly take over if he develops correctly. A fantastic goalkeeper and definitely was he's definitely going to fit into this team. And this is going to be the first player then, Zabrani. Again, a player who is not developed to his best potential, in my opinion, on this save, because usually his potential is really nuts. But he's definitely a very good centre-half. Great tackling, reasonably quick, good jumping, good fitness, good teamwork. And do you know what? He's just a good player to have as a backup centre-back. Um, obviously, you've got him and Canate. Um, very, very good options to have in the team. And a sign-in, which, you know, I like to make quite often. Then we go to Ansu Fati, a player who I don't sign too too often to be fair um but as you can see he can pretty much do it all he can play on the left he can play on the right and he can play up front i wanted to add an another attacking player not just a striker not just a winger so we did pay a we, we, we paid the price because he's on a lot of money and we also paid a hefty transfer fee but at the end of the day this guy can actually play any position and he do a good job he's got sensational finishing so he can play up front he's also got the pace to play on the wings he's got great dribbling he's got he's good off the ball as well good vision and he's only 21 so you also obviously pay a little bit for that factor as well he's got a ton of pros going for him very few cons and hopefully this guy can work out and be a great sign -in. and this guy here is just more of obviously a player who i've got initially now for backup and obviously can play the cup games but allison's only getting older this guy's 24 which is young for a goalkeeper and it was it was crucial we had a really good backup goalkeeper and personally i prefer this guy over the players we had so that's exactly why he joins the team and this is going to be the team then going into what is going to be the next season. It's a little bit different. Obviously, this is filtered by the best 11. And to be fair, I am going to make sure Trent gets game time because I'm a big fan of Trent in real life and in the game. So we're going to have Allison, Timber, DeLitt, Van Dyke, Robertson, Rice, Bellingham, Salah, Musiala, Fatty, and Diego Jota. Now, as I always say, um, this is filtered by the best 11 according to the assistant. So if you do disagree, this is not necessarily my pick. Um, This is what the manager thinks So or the assistant manager. So let's get into the next season and see exactly what we can do well unfortunately it's actually probably the worst season we've had and this comes down to the fact i was expecting a season like this right because we have to replace players and there is going to be a season where eventually you need a gel in season i feel this is going to be our gel in season although i say that we've still won the quadruple obviously we're used to winning sort of five to six trophies so far on this save so this is striking me as a little bit of a gel in season but still a good season in the prem 134 goals scored only 27 conceded and if we go into the player screen here you can see here obviously it's a very, very similar pattern. We've got tons of goals from well, Salah, Nunes, Jota, 29 for Fatty, a great season from him. De Litt, 22, Bellingham with 21, Musiala with 19, Diaz with 15, then it does drop off a little bit. Assists, the same story, 39 for Salah, 12 for Nunes, we've got 9, 10, 12, 17, 18, 14, 12, 21 there from Robertson. Tons of assists coming in from a variety of different players and tons of goals coming in as well from, again, a variety of different players. And going into what is going to be the next season, we've got £85 million, pounds, which is going to be, obviously, the smallest budget we've had, but that is still a ridiculous amount of money to be playing with. And I feel like now is going to be the time where, you know, it's, it's important we don't bring in, you know, another five players or anything ridiculous because this is the first season I've noticed that gel and factor. You know, we still won the, you know, we won the quadruple. Let's, let's take that into account. But we, we've been winning pretty much everything. Um, Last season, we didn't. So now this is important. Obviously, maybe we brought in too many players. Maybe we brought in the wrong players. But I don't really think that's the case because the players that we did bring in done really well. So we're going to take some time and think logically about the next step and see who we can bring in. Oh, I'm going to be honest. I only wanted one player and that was to bring in another goal scorer. And the one on the market was going to be Victor Asimhem. Obviously, from Napoli, 130 million in installments. Also, we did let Keller go to Milan. I don't know if that was on the last screen, so I will repeat it. Um, To Milan for 13 million. We also offloaded Bajetic. Now, this guy is really good in real life, but just on FM, he didn't develop. I probably didn't give him enough of a chance. But Liverpool fans, that is a player to be excited about. So, you know... Hopefully, you've got a nice prospect there in midfield because you could do with some good youngsters in that area. But I've seen him. We all know who he is. We all know what he can do. Um, he, he can really do it all. I mean, we're talking 16 finishing. He's rapid on the ball. And this is what I wanted him for. The pace in behind, just the speed of this guy, I think is really going to push us to that next level. And I think he's going to score a ton of goals. I think he's going to get involved a lot. I also think he's going to create a little bit as well. And he's a striker who I love to get. He's great off the ball as well. 26 years of age. So, But considering people we have been signing, he is one of the older ones. But still, 26, he's still got, a, you know, 
it's got a solid sort of seven years in him before you even consider looking to sort of move him on or see a decline. So hopefully with this team now, we can go in and get some stuff done. Alison Timber, Delit Van Dyke, Robertson Rice, Bellingham, Salah, Musiala, Fatty, and Asimhem. So let's go into the next season and see exactly what we can do. So as you can see, we are back to winning ways. We've won five trophies and it is an absolutely incredible season. And I think that little sign-in possibly has helped out quite a bit. Champions League winners, VRB Leipzig, Premier League winners, FA Cup winners, Carabao Cup winners, and Community Shield winners. It's a very, very dominant season in the Premier League too. Obviously, nearly a 30-point advantage in that scenario. Um, 164 goals scored, only 20 conceded as well. So very good offensively and defensively. In terms of the squad, we're going to have 76 goals, by the way, coming in from Mo Salah. 47 for Asim Hem, Nunes with 38, 29 for Fatty, Musiala coming in with 19. Um, tons and tons of stuff. But what I want to focus on in a second is exactly what we've done with this squad. Assists, you can see how good it is. But I want to show you this right now. We The ability on this team is incredible. We can look at it now. We've obviously got Mo Salah still in great form, coming towards the end of his career, but we have got a lot of players that can instantly replace him and fill his shoes. Musiala's a bang on five out of five now, developed into a really, really nice player. We've obviously got Ansu Fati, nearly a five-star developing really nicely at this club as well. Everyone is doing so, so well. Even Van Dyke still enjoying some good football at the age of 34. Jude Bellingham, again, developed into a really, really nice player. Nearly a five-star ability. Look at them. Look at them attributes for Jude Bellingham. Absolutely incredible. And this is something, obviously, you don't see attributes in real life. You see stats, though. If Bellingham goes to Liverpool, let me know in the comments right now. Do you think it's going to work as well as what it's done in this game? Declan Rice developed incredibly well, obviously more defensive midfield player. Everyone's developed so nicely. And if we go onto the screen now, as we are going to, because um, we are going to break down the tactic, I mean, we're going to filter my best 11. That's the manager's best 11, in, in his opinion. I'd actually argue Trent in there as well, and possibly even some changes up here. But the team we've left them with is ridiculous on paper. It really is. But no, the squad we've left them with is really, really good. So you can see here, we've got Allison, Timber, Delit, Van Dyke, Robertson, Rice, Bellingham, Mo Salah, Musiala, Fatty, Asimhem. On the bench, we've got Costa, Trent, Diaz, Nunes, Zabrani, Fabinho, Jota, Canate, Harvey Elliott, Gakpo, Matip, Henderson, Carvalho, Phillips, Tamiskas, and obviously we've got Ario and Lewis um, on sort of the reserves area. So a sensational team. We are now going to clear it very quickly because we want to obviously break down this tactic because it is a really fun one to use. And again, Again, shout out to Nap for making this. It's going to be based around a tiki taka sort of style, but in my opinion, it's more of sort of a press and in your face type of tactic. So we're going to start off with a balanced mentality. Um, in possession, you want standard, pass into space, overlap left and right, focus play down the left and the right, work the ball into the box, low crosses, and run at defense with a shorter pass and directness and a higher tempo. In transition, you want counter press, counter, distribute to the fullbacks, and throw it long. Out of possession, you want a standard defensive line, a high press line of engagement, much more often, and prevent short goalkeeper distribution. In terms of the player roles, you want an advance forward on attack, tackle harder and move into channels. Next to him, you want another advance forward, attack, pass it shorter, shoot less often, run from position, tackle harder and move into channels. And um, we did cover that one, we did cover that one. Next to him, or the, sort of the wide areas, we've got an inside forward on attack. Um, they are a little bit different, so I'm gonna show you the left-hand side first. An inside forward on attack, pass it shorter, close down more, dribble more, cut inside with the ball, take more risks, cross less often, and get further forwards. And on the right, we've got an inside forward on attack, pass it shorter, sit narrower, close down more, dribble more, cut inside with the ball, take more risks, cross less often, and get further forwards. We're going to have two midfield players, box to boxers, both on support, pass it shorter, close down more, tackle harder, mark tighter, and run from position. And next to him, it's a little bit different, the same role, same position, take more risks, dribble more, get further forwards, move into channels, tackle harder, mark tighter, and run from position. Go into the back line then, we've got a wing back on the left hand side on support, pass it shorter, sit narrower, close down more, tackle harder, mark tighter, run wide with the ball, get further forwards, and on the right hand side, again, same position, same role, um, pass it shorter, sit narrower, close down more, tackle harder, mark tighter, run wide with the ball, and get further forwards. We're going to have two defenders, both ball playing defenders, and they are exactly the same, both on defend, pass it shorter, dribble less, take more risks, and hold position. And one last guy is going to be the sweeper keeper on defend, take fewer risks and tackle harder. Now, if you are noticing a few bookings in this team, you can simply remove the tackle harder. It will slightly alter how you play, how aggressive the team is. But if you wish to go down that path, that is definitely something you can do. 
But guys, that is going to be Liverpool rebuild. I think it's been probably one of the most fun rebuilds we've done in terms of the budgets we've been given, the players we've brought in. If you have enjoyed it, smash the like button. Comment below the next team you want to see. There is a community poll going on right now where you can vote on the next team to be featured. And please do subscribe. And as I mentioned, um, sort of halfway through the video, please do come over to the Twitch as well. We are branching out onto there just so we can also have a little bit more of an interaction with you guys. You can get involved. You can request tactics. You can also play against me as well, which is kind of fun. A lot of people seem to be enjoying it. So that is going to be it for today, though, guys. Hope you guys have enjoyed yourselves. If you have, leave a like and I will see you in the next one.